In this video presentation, we will discuss about the YALISA, abbreviation for enzyme linked amino sorbent assay. YALISA, the most commonly and routinely used serological based confirmatory disease diagnostic method. The host, our body, is prone for infection due to the foreign and infectious pathogens, which is an antigen, which may be bacteria, virus, fungus, etc. In order to protect from these agents, our body recruits or raises specific antibodies to kill or neutralize this specific antigen as a protective mechanism. For example, the bacterial organism, Brucella abortus, which causes abortion in cattle. In this regards, the body raises, that is, produces specific anti Brucella antibody as a protective mechanism against Brucella antigen. So the presence of infection can be serologically identified by either by detecting the presence of antigen or by detecting the presence of specific antibody which is raised against the particular antigen so during acute phase that is in initial stage of infection antigens will be in detectable level during convalescent phase or recovery phase that is in later stage of infection antibodies will be in detectable level for identifying this antigen or antibody serological tests like yaliza that is, enzyme-linked aminosorbent assay can be done. In Yaliza, the most important component used is, enzyme-labeled, or linked antibody. They are nothing but an antibody, which are linked to an enzyme, mostly HRPO enzyme, that is, horseradish peroxidase enzyme, which is isolated from the, roots of horseradish. They are generally termed as, conjugate, since they are conjugated to an enzyme. This enzyme-linked antibody which attaches to, either, antigen, or, antibody. Subsequently, on addition of substrate plus chromogen to this, due to catalytic reaction mediated by this HRPO enzyme, turns the colorless chromogen to color. In this technique, orthophenylene diamine, OPD, or diaminobenzidine, DAB, are used as chromogen, along with the hydrogen peroxide, as substrate, for HRPO enzyme. This test can be done in three different ways, depending upon the purpose or need, and are described as Number 1. Direct Yaliza. Used for the detection of antigen. 2. Indirect Yaliza. Used for the detection of antibody, or antigen. But used mostly for the detection of antibody. And lastly. Sandwich Yaliza. Used for the detection of antigen. We will discuss in detail about each method. This protocol is done in an Yaliza plate, which is made up of polystyrene material, consist of 96 wells, flat bottom plate. The test can be done in each well separately for each sample. So this test helps in, large-scale screening of, multiple samples, at a time, along with positive and negative control. Number 1. Direct Yaliza. Used for the detection of antigen. For conducting Yaliza, a polystyrene plate is used. The special about this polystyrene plate is, it is having a very good affinity, or binding property for, any proteins, that is, antigen or antibody. In direct Yaliza, the first step is, coating of unknown antigen, that is, addition of test sample. Following coating, and incubation, washing is done. Between each step, washing is done, using wash buffer, made up of 0.05%, or 0.1% twin 20. After washing, there are unoccupied spaces left, that may interfere with the nonspecific binding of any antigen or antibodies. So the second step is blocking. Here these unoccupied spaces are blocked by using blocking buffer, made up of 5% skim milk powder, or 1% bovine serum albumin. After blocking, incubation and washing, a known HRPO labeled anti-specific antibody is added, to bind to this specific antigen. For example, if the brucella antigen is to be identified, then a known HRPO labeled anti-brucella antibodies are used. If the rabies antigen is to be identified, then a known HRPO labeled anti rabies antibodies are used. That is, antibodies used for detection are specific to the particular antigen. Since these antibodies are in direct contact or direct interaction to the antigen, they are considered as primary antibody. Following addition of this conjugated primary antibody, incubation and washing, subsequently, substrate plus chromogen mixture is added. This mixture, due to catalytic reaction, mediated by this HRPO enzyme, turns the colorless OPD chromogen to color. The color development, which indicates the positivity of this cascade of reaction, 
which happens only if the sample is positive for the particular antigen. In contrast, if the sample is negative for the specific antigen, this conjugated primary antibody will not have opportunity to interact with the antigen. So in absence of HRPO conjugate, no catalytic reaction, and therefore no color development occurs, which indicates the sample is negative. So, here, lack of color development, indicates, the test sample is negative. And the color development, indicates, the test sample is positive. Next. Number 2. Indirect ELISA. Used for the detection of antibody, or antigen. But mostly used for the detection of antibody. So now we will see about antibody detection by indirect ELISA. In indirect ELISA, the first step is, coding of known specific antigen, which are considered as, capture antigen, since they are captured to the polystyrene surface. Following coding, incubation, and washing, the second step is blocking. Here the unoccupied spaces, are blocked, by using blocking buffer, as described earlier. After blocking, incubation, and washing, test serum samples are added. If the sample is positive for particular antibodies, it interacts to the known specific antigen. Then, after incubation, and washing, a known HRPO labeled anti-species antibody is added, to bind to this test antibody. For example, if the test serum is collected from sheep, for blue tongue diagnosis, then a known HRPO labeled anti-sheep antibodies are used. If the test serum is collected from human, for brucella diagnosis, then a known HRPO labeled anti-human antibodies are used. That is, these antibodies used for detection are, species specific. Since these antibodies, which are not in, direct contact, or interaction to the antigen, they are considered as, secondary antibody. Following addition of this conjugated secondary antibody, subsequently, substrate plus chromogen mixture is added. This mixture, due to catalytic reaction, mediated by this HRPO enzyme, turns the colorless OPD chromogen to, color. The color development, which indicates the positivity of this cascade of reaction, which happens only if the sample is positive for the particular antibody. In contrast, if the sample is negative for the particular antibody, this secondary antibody conjugate, will not have opportunity to interact to the unknown primary antibody. So in absence of HRPO conjugate, no catalytic reaction, and therefore no color development occurs, which indicates the test serum sample is negative. So, here also, lack of color development, indicates, the test sample is negative. And the color development, indicates, the test sample is positive. Next. Number 3. Sandwich Elisa. Used for the detection of antigen. You know the word sandwich means, the vegetables stuffed between two bread slices. So, in Sandwich Elisa, the name suggests that, here the antigen is, sandwiched between two antibodies. In Sandwich Elisa, the first step is, coating the well with known anti-specific antibody, which are considered as, capture antibody, since they are captured to the polystyrene surface. Following coating, incubation, and washing, the second step is blocking. Here the unoccupied spaces are blocked, by using blocking buffer. After blocking, incubation, and washing, test samples, that is, unknown antigen is added. If the sample is positive for a particular antigen, it interacts to the, known anti-specific primary antibody, which are captured to the surface. Then, after incubation, and washing, Another known anti-specific antibody is added, which are considered as, detecting antibody. So here, the antigen is, sandwiched between two specific primary antibodies. The difference between these two primary antibody is, they are obtained, or raised from two different sources. The capture antibody may be raised in, rabbit. And the detecting antibody may be raised in, guinea pig. So, this additional step further increases the specificity of the test. Then, after incubation, and washing, a known HRPO labeled anti-species antibody is added, to bind to this detecting antibody. Since the detecting primary antibody is from, guinea pig source, a known HRPO labeled anti-guinea pig secondary antibody is used. So these two primary antibodies are, antigen specific, but from different source. And the secondary antibody conjugate is, species specific. Following addition of this conjugated secondary antibody, subsequently, Substrate plus chromogen mixture is added. This mixture, due to catalytic reaction, mediated by this HRPO enzyme, turns the colorless OPD chromogen to, color. The color development, 
which indicates the positivity of this cascade of reaction, which happens only if the sample is positive for the particular antigen. In contrast, if the sample is negative for the particular antigen, the detecting primary antibody will not have opportunity to interact with the unknown antigen. In turn, the secondary antibody conjugate do not interact to the detecting primary antibody. So in absence of HRPO conjugate, no catalytic reaction, and therefore no color development occurs, which indicates the test sample is negative for a particular antigen. So, here also, lack of color development, indicates, the test sample is negative. And the color development, indicates, the test sample is positive. How the color development is interpreted? The degree of color development completely depend upon the quantity of antigen, or antibody in the test sample. For example in this indirect Yaliza, the lower the antibody level, depicts the lesser color development. And the higher the antibody level, depicts the more color development. How this amount of color development is measured? It is measured by an instrument called, Yaliza Reader, which work with the principle of spectrophotometry. For example, in this test experiment, six test samples, in duplicate, were ran, along with, positive and negative control. Control is very important for this test. In the positive control, there should be color development. But, in the negative control, there should not be any color development. If it is vice versa, or any color development in negative control, then the experiment carried is, invalid. In this case, the test has to be repeated. So the control is very important for this experiment, and also for the interpretation of results. Here, sample 1, 2, 3, and 5 were having an appreciable color development, so it can be considered positive, visibly. But, sample 4, and 6, shows very slight color development, that cannot be considered, either positive, or negative, visibly. So the Yaliza plate has to be ran over the, Yaliza reader. After running through the Yaliza reader, you may get the optical density value, that is, OD value, at particular wavelength for each well. For example, for the positive control, if you are getting an OD value, something like, 2.000, and for the negative control, you may get an OD value, something like, 0.023. You can consider, the test experiment is valid. Then, the positivity is, more than or, equal to, 40% the OD value of, positive control. That is, here, the positive control OD value is, 2.000. Then the, 40% of 2.000 is, 0 0.8. So, the cutoff OD value is, 0 0.8. Which means, the samples, which are having the OD value, more than, or equal to, 0 0.8, is considered, positive. So, if this is the mean OD value, obtained for 6 samples. Then, based on the cutoff value, the sample 1, 2, 3, and 5, which are having the OD value, more than 0 0.8, and are considered, positive. But, the sample 4, and 6, are having the OD value, less than 0 0.8, and are considered, negative by Yaliza. So the control is very important for this experiment, and also for the interpretation of results. This is how the Yaliza results were analyzed. With this we are coming to the end of Yaliza and its types. In next video presentation we will discuss in detail an agar gel precipitation test. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.